GCN was set up so long ago now, 25 years ago, um, to disseminate information for and with and by a community which was very diverse, very fractured, very invisible, at a time when, you know, thinking back 25 years, we didn't have internet, we had no very obvious way of connecting except through the print media. I have to say, it's so long ago now that I can't remember the details, but I do remember just looking at the front cover and going, oh my God, it's actually here. And then putting it up to my nose to smell the newsprint. <laughs> A smell that I've never forgotten. Well, when GCN was started, I think it was an incredibly brave and courageous thing to do. There were no positive representations of lesbian and gay and trans people. In fact, you could say that there were no representations. It was a very political magazine. It had a very underground feel to it as well. You know, it was about people's lives, you know, and people had difficult lives at that time. It wasn't easy to be out and gay in Ireland. It was reflecting the concerns and desires and dreams of, of our rainbow society. And, and we had a lot, there was a lot on our plate. GCN's arrival on the scene in a way was, was, in hindsight now, was actually quite beautiful timing. The lead up to criminalisation, it was the only thing really that was reporting on from the inside out about um, gay lives and about David Norris's case and about the, the, I suppose, the political lead up to the actual event of decriminalisation. There was always that sort of invisible desire to actually get mainstream media to engage with us. But you know, in the absence of them covering our stories, it was up to us to actually, in a sense, make and, and cover our own stories and, and, and then by extension celebrate them. There's a cover and uh, there's, the, the, there's a really lovely cover which is a moment outside um, Leinster House where it's a real sense of celebration in it and it's, it's a momentous cover in our history. We have um, a civil partnership issue every year. When the first couple got married here, we had them on the cover. So it's really important to sort of to recognise that. And you know, and I hope that when marriage equality happens, that again we we get to celebrate that all over again with our readers. Times have changed a lot, but I think that young people still connect out through GCN via GCN to the world. But I also think that GCN has a really important part to play in, um, I suppose, mentoring. So I went to Michael Barron and talked to him about doing a youth issue. It was a really big moment, you know, it was a real big statement of this is kind of a new generation of LGBT young people who are confident enough to show their faces to the world. It's really interesting to look at the, the evolution, the development of GCN from those early days of being a, a newspaper uh, to becoming really the, the, the lovely, professional and very highly respected magazine that it is today. We, we print 11,000 copies a month um, and about 60% of our overall distribution is in Dublin, in the greater Dublin area. But it goes from, you know, from Donegal to Kerry to Galway, like it, it really, um, it really does go all around the country. Everybody remembers the first time they read GCM and everyone, although they mightn't have that complete exact memory, they will know that in the moment of reading the first GCN, it was their moment of connecting up to their community in this country. I hope GCN continues to hold up a mirror to our rainbow society and to show us in all our finery and our glory and even parts of our tawdry selves every now and then because we need to even be reminded of that. Um, and I hope it continues to, to hold up a mirror to our rainbow society, our LGBT community. But I also hope while it's doing that, it be it comes a window into our, our life and our world of uh, of aspirations and dreams and concerns for the rest of Irish society.